Nothing in this world is exactly as it seems at first glance. What sustains and keeps you alive today could turn against you tomorrow and become an agent of destruction. This is the case with water, one of the greatest blessings that Allah, exalted and glorified be He, has bestowed upon humanity. But have you ever stopped to ponder the mysteries that might be hidden in this vital substance? Have you thought about the unfathomable depths that could reside in something as commonplace as water, which flows through rivers, accumulates in oceans, and springs from wells, faithfully fulfilling its divine purpose? What would you think if I told you that water, this element we all take for granted, might possess something akin to emotions, almost as if it were a reflection of human emotions themselves? It might sound incredible, but there are indications that water can be influenced by the goodness and evil that surround us, as if it could feel a kind of joy or anger in response to the injustices and wrong actions we commit. Recent scientific research has begun to unveil an astonishing discovery. Water, that essential element for all life, might possess qualities that we have so far attributed exclusively to living beings. To explore this fascinating possibility more deeply, a researcher decided to conduct an experiment that, although simple in its design, could reveal hidden truths about the nature of water. He filled four jars with rice and water, and each night, he would approach each one, murmuring different words, carefully selected. Each word was spoken with a different intention to see if the water would respond in any way to these verbal influences. Are you wondering what the results of this unique experiment were? Have you stopped to consider what this really means? A significant part of our own bodies, as well as much of the planet we inhabit, is composed of water. This vital element is not only essential for our physical existence, but could also be a bearer of secrets that, when revealed, would forever change our understanding of the world around us. The information you are about to discover could have such profound relevance that it might accompany and guide you for the rest of your life, helping you appreciate anew the immense value of this blessing that Allah, the Most High, has bestowed upon us. Allow me to begin with a question that might seem simple but holds deep wisdom. In times past, when someone experienced a bad dream, our elders would advise opening the tap and recounting the dream to the flowing water. At first glance, this advice might seem like an unfounded superstition, but was it really so? Were those who followed this advice simply ignorant, or on the contrary, were they aware of a mystery that we, with our modernity and rationality, have overlooked? If you think that speaking to the running water about a disturbing dream is something absurd and senseless, I invite you to reconsider your position. I encourage you to keep paying attention because what comes next could change your perspective. In a world like ours, where negativity abounds, challenges are many, and the rapid increase in diseases is evident, it is possible that the key to understanding and perhaps remedying many of these situations lies unexpectedly in the water itself. If you are ready, let's begin. Let's go back to the beginning, to the very origins of creation. According to a hadith transmitted by our beloved prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, in a time before time itself, when there was nothing but Allah, his throne, the symbol of his majesty and power, rested upon the water. This water, though the earth and sky did not yet exist, already had a divine purpose assigned by Allah. It was much later, when the earth and the heavens were created, that Allah, in His infinite wisdom, sent this mysterious substance to our planet. The earth, from its creation, is like a unique and wonderful work of art, designed by the hand of the Creator to reflect His greatness and perfection. Eventually, man appeared on this divine stage, and over time, humanity flourished, reaching heights never before seen. In the midst of all this, Water has remained the cornerstone of our existence. It is through water that we meet many of our daily needs. We clean ourselves, cultivate our food, cook our meals, refresh ourselves on hot days, and keep warm on cold days. The list of uses we make of water could go on indefinitely. However, how many of us have taken a moment to deeply reflect on what this substance really is, so common and yet so essential, 
that Allah has placed at our disposal. In the depths of a military laboratory, hidden and shielded from the world's view, where weapons capable of causing mass destruction are developed and studied. A group of scientists gather to discuss the latest advances in a new and terrifying bacteriological weapon. This project, on which they had worked tirelessly for years, was almost in its final stage, ready to be completed. What these scientists did not know was that this weapon, conceived to be a great threat to humanity, would never see the light of day. Suddenly, the meeting was abruptly interrupted when everyone present began to suffer severe symptoms of food poisoning. They were immediately taken to the hospital, but unfortunately, none of them could be saved. The most puzzling part of all is that, after a thorough investigation, no clear causes were found for what had happened. It was known that the scientists had only consumed water from a jug on the table. However, upon analyzing the water, no poison, additive, or substance that could have caused such poisoning was detected. Despite everything, the reports concluded that the water had been responsible. What could have really happened? How is it possible that water, normally a source of life and purity, became an agent of death? This mystery left many perplexed and raises profound questions about the true nature of water and the hidden powers that might reside in it. As years passed, more advanced scientific research began to shed light on the nature of water, revealing that this substance could be much more complex and enigmatic than we had ever imagined. These investigations suggest that water is not simply an inert liquid, but is highly receptive to external factors, such as the emotions and thoughts of the people around it. Like a sophisticated computer, water seems to have the ability to record information and energy from its environment, processing it, and transforming it in ways that the human mind cannot yet fully comprehend. Scientists have concluded that the molecular groups in water function like memory cells, capable of storing and preserving the entire history of its interaction with the world. These molecules rearrange themselves, reconfiguring like the letters of an alphabet, thus creating a mysterious code that encapsulates the events and words that have surrounded the water. What was said or done in the presence of the water those scientists drank could have been captured and recorded by it, storing in its memory the information that perhaps, in some way, triggered the tragic series of events that followed. Thus, the water they consumed knew all the answers, even though these secrets remain hidden to us. In 1995, Japanese scientist Masaru Emoto became a world-renowned figure thanks to his research that challenged traditional conceptions about water. His work caused a great stir in the scientific community and the general public, as it revealed something many would never have considered possible. Emoto studied the changes that occur in the structure of water when it is exposed to different types of music. Under the lens of a microscope, he observed how water reacted surprisingly to the vibrations and frequencies of various melodies. The water crystals, which previously appeared chaotic or disorganized, took on different shapes depending on the type of music they were exposed to. However, Masaru Emoto did not stop with his experiments on music. He decided to take his research a step further by exposing water to prayers from different religions, and the results he obtained were equally astounding. The patterns that emerged in the water crystals seemed to reflect the essence of the words that had been spoken, as if the water uniquely responded to each invocation. This discovery opened the door to even deeper questions about the nature of water. One of the most fascinating questions that science has yet to fully answer is, why is water the only substance on Earth that naturally exists in all three states, liquid, solid, and gas? This phenomenon, although known to all, remains an unresolved mystery that could be linked to the special and even spiritual properties of water, especially when we consider experiments like those conducted with Zamzum water, which we will explore later. In the experiments conducted by Japanese scientist Masaru Emoto, it was observed that certain words, particularly love and gratitude, have a profoundly positive effect on water, influencing the formation of its crystals in a harmonious and beautiful way. 
These words, charged with positive vibrations, seem to unite and organize the water molecules into patterns of surprising symmetry and beauty. If we accept that water can be affected by human emotions, both positive and negative, then it should not surprise us that a person who drinks water over which a prayer has been spoken, filled with pure intention and devotion, might experience improvements in their physical health and psychological well-being. After all, water flows through every part of our body. Even our brains, vital organs of thought and emotion, are mostly composed of water. This is a mystery that modern science has yet to fully unravel, but which our ancestors, with their ancestral wisdom, seem to understand in a more intuitive and profound way. Perhaps they knew, in some way, that water, with its ability to reflect our intentions and emotions, is a medium through which we can connect more intimately with the world around us and with the divine. Likewise, the noble Quran enlightens us with a revelation that highlights the spiritual importance of water. In one of its verses, Allah says, He sends down water from the sky upon you to purify you, to remove the impurity of Satan from you, to strengthen your hearts, and to make your steps firm in battle. This statement underscores not only the value of water as a physical element of cleansing, but also its power to purify us from the malevolent influences of Satan and to strengthen our hearts in times of challenge and conflict. While the act of physical purification through washing with water is easily understood, these words of the Quran invite us to reflect more deeply. How can water purify us from diabolical influences and cleans our hearts? The answers to these questions are hidden in the water. It is remarkable to note that throughout history, almost all religions have granted great importance to water, considering it a means of purification and spiritual renewal. For example, Tibetan monks firmly believe that the key to curing diseases and achieving longevity lies in the purification of the impure water that resides within our bodies. According to them, the secret to longevity and good health lies in the ability to cleanse internal water, freeing it from any impurities that might affect our well-being. Similarly, in Islam, ablution with water is practiced before performing prayers, a ritual that not only purifies the body, but also prepares the soul for the act of worship. Christians, for their part, practice baptism with water, a sacrament that symbolizes spiritual rebirth and the cleansing of sins. But this reverence for water leads us to an intriguing question. Is it possible that water, exposed to the negativities of the world, could be affected to the point of falling ill in some way, similar to how we humans can be affected by the evil that surrounds us? Various scientific experiments have shown that water, after undergoing intense chemical treatment and filtration processes that alter and damage its natural biological structure, finally reaches our homes in a state very different from its original form. Although seemingly pure to the naked eye, this water has traveled long distances through pipes, exposed to a series of chemicals and processes that have profoundly affected it. What is even more unsettling is that this water, in its journey, seems to retain in its memory the chemicals and violence to which it has been subjected. By the time it reaches our taps, this water has accumulated negative energies, laden with the emotional and physical impurities it has encountered along the way. What we consume and use in our daily lives is, in many cases, water that is almost dead, devoid of the vitality and purity it once had, and instead impregnated with negative energies such as hatred, resentment, and stress, which could affect not only our physical health, but also our spiritual well-being. There is a place in Venezuela that is so remote and difficult to access that few have had the opportunity to visit it. To reach it, one must traverse dense tropical forests for three days and then climb an 800-meter-high mountain. In this place, where the hand of man has barely left a mark, the water remains pure and intact, preserving its natural state without the interference of industrial processes. Intrigued by the purity of this water, a group of researchers decided to take samples and conduct a series of comparative experiments. Using special equipment, the scientists compared the Venezuelan water with the ordinary drinking water that reaches our homes. The results were surprising. 
The water from this remote corner of Venezuela turned out to be much more active than common drinking water, not just three or four times more active, but an astonishing 40,000 times more active. This type of water, with a high level of energy and vitality, has the ability to immediately revitalize the body and the entire biological system. Perhaps for this reason, the inhabitants of this region, although living far from modern technology and urbanization, seem to be happier and enjoy greater longevity. They do not wish at all for civilization and its effects to alter the purity of their environment and above all, their water. If we turn our attention to the composition of our vital organs, such as the heart, lungs, muscles, or even the brain, we realize through detailed analysis that they are all permeated with water. In a revealing experiment, a doctor extracted a blood sample from a patient and, using a specialized microscope, proceeded to examine it to assess the individual's physical condition. The initial results showed that the red blood cells had lost their electrical charge, causing them to clump together, forming structures known as mammary plastids. These cellular clumps are associated with various serious diseases, including heart and lung problems, as well as many other potentially dangerous conditions. However, after this initial diagnosis, the patient was given structured water to drink a form of water whose molecular structure has been restored to a more orderly and vital state. After some time, a new blood sample was taken from the patient for examination. This time, the analysis showed a completely different picture. The blood cells were more active, floating freely and repelling each other due to the restoration of their electrical charge. This phenomenon not only improves oxygen transport in the body, but also suggests that the quality of the water we consume can have a direct impact on our health and the functioning of our vital systems. It is astonishing to think that something as simple as drinking water can have such profound effects on our body and health. But what has truly captured the fascination of many is Amazon water, a source of water that has attracted the attention of both believers and scientists around the world. One of the most captivating studies was conducted by Japanese scientist Masaru Emoto, who focused his research on Zamzam water, known for its purity and spiritual significance in Islam. During his experiments, Emoto allowed Zamzam water to listen to the Adan, the call to prayer, and observed a particular molecular structure that formed in response. Interestingly, when the same water was exposed to the sound of a bell, its structure changed significantly, suggesting that Zamzam water has a unique sensitivity to sacred and religious vibrations. The World Health Organization has reported that Zamzam water is one of the healthiest on the planet, and despite advances in modern science, the mystery of its properties remains incompletely solved. What makes this water even more intriguing is that it springs up in the middle of the desert, in a region where water sources are extremely scarce, and its origin remains unknown. The Zamzam well, located about 80 kilometers from the sea, is only 1.5 meters deep. Despite this, millions of pilgrims draw water from it during the peak Hajj season, and the water level never decreases, a phenomenon that defies logic and scientific understanding. Another fascinating property of this water is that, unlike others, it quenches both hunger and thirst in those who consume it and is only eliminated from the body through sweat, not turning into urine. Pilgrims visiting Mecca are often warned not to consume Zamzam water exclusively due to its powerful nature. Tests conducted in laboratories in the United States have shown that Zamzam water is the only water in the world that does not contain bacteria or microorganisms, making it absolutely pure. It has also been observed that by adding just one drop of Zamzam water to 100 drops of regular water, the latter adopts the properties of Zamzam water, transforming into a purer and more revitalizing version of itself. An additional experiment that highlights the astonishing properties of water involved dividing a sample of water into two parts. One of these parts was placed in front of a television, while the other was kept out of sight and sound of the television. Next, the reactions of the water sample exposed to the noise and negative information emanating from the television were measured. What surprised the scientists was that both water samples 
despite being physically separated, reacted similarly to the negative influences. This discovery led researchers to question whether the water present in the human body could play a role in the irrational and violent behavior sometimes observed during disputes in crowds, even when there seems to be no clear reason for such behavior. When we reflect on the miracles mentioned in the sacred scriptures, such as the moment when the sea parted to allow Prophet Musa, Moses, and his people to cross in search of freedom, or when Prophet Isa, Jesus, walked on water, we face phenomena that remain shrouded in a mystery that transcends human understanding. As humanity, are we giving this extraordinary gift the attention and respect it deserves? It is absolutely imperative that, globally, countries with access to oceans and seas become aware of the gravity of their actions when dumping industrial and radioactive waste into these vast bodies of water. Every time these toxic substances are released into the sea, not only is the quality of the water compromised, but what we might call the memory of the water is also altered. In the last 15 years, we have witnessed an alarming phenomenon. The rate of glacier melting has tripled, a clear sign of the drastic changes occurring on our planet. This accelerated melting not only contributes to rising sea levels, but also symbolizes a profound imbalance in Earth's natural systems, an imbalance that is largely the result of human actions. At the beginning of this reflection, I posed a provocative question. Is the water angry with us? Now, after considering the facts, I invite you to reflect again on this question. Think about it. Over the past 35 years, we have witnessed a significant increase in the frequency and intensity of storms and hurricanes with unprecedented destructive power. The number of natural disasters has been steadily increasing, affecting more and more regions of the planet, even those previously considered safe from these phenomena. The data is alarming. Between 1972 and 1982, approximately 1,000 500 natural disasters were recorded worldwide. However, in the next decade, from 1983 to 1992, this number increased to 3,500, and between 1993 and 2002, the figure rose even further, reaching 6,000 reported natural disasters. For example, in 2004, a devastating tsunami swept through the coasts of Asia, claiming the lives of 226,000 people and leaving 500,000 more homeless. The following year, in 2005, Europe experienced floods that displaced 200,000 people from their homes. That same year, Hurricane Katrina struck the southern coast of the United States with force, leaving a million people homeless and marking a turning point in the history of natural disasters in that country. These increasingly frequent and severe events cannot be ignored. They force us to question the role our actions have played in triggering these phenomena and call us to reflect on the relationship we maintain with nature and the vital resources that Allah has given us to live in balance and harmony. Have you ever stopped to consider the possibility that nature, with its infinite patience and balance, might be reacting to our irresponsible behavior? It may seem like a disturbing idea, but perhaps what we are seeing is nothing more than nature responding to the damage we have inflicted on it. If we continue on the same path, without changing our ways or respecting the limits that have been established for us, we may face even more severe consequences in the near future. The water, which has been so generously given to us to sustain life, could be a vehicle for that natural response, showing its vengeance through phenomena that, until now, we have only begun to understand. Dear brothers and sisters, before concluding, I would like to take a moment to express my most sincere gratitude for your continued support and interest in our videos. May Allah, in His infinite generosity, bless you abundantly for accompanying us on this journey of knowledge and reflection. However, I would like to make a humble request. According to our statistics, 80% of you who enjoy our content have not yet subscribed to our channel. I invite you to subscribe, not only to help us grow and reach a wider audience, but also so that we can continue spreading the message of Islam. Who knows, perhaps someone who is not yet a Muslim might find inspiration in our words, and through them, draw closer to Islam. Remember, 
Whoever facilitates a good deed is like the one who performs it, and every subscription is an opportunity to send a positive message to someone else. If at any point I have made mistakes in my words, I ask you to forgive me. These mistakes are purely mine and do not reflect the perfection of Islam or the words of Allah. Exalted be he. I look forward to meeting you again in a future video. Until then, may Allah keep you safe and protected under his mercy.